at one point we used to clean all of our equipment on a yearly, actually on a bi-annual basis using an air compressor and an open room. That's not safe <laughs> because this is before I started here. They would just blow the equipment out and they wouldn't even wear respirators uh, you know, to keep the dust at bay. Anyway, so this machine it was a, a brainstorm that I had. Um, on paper it was basically a box with some suction device and a blowing device <laughs> of sorts. So this is the end result. I built this about three years ago and um, I did all of the mechanical work and design. I designed the whole unit and our maintenance, one of our maintenance uh, employees actually built the wooden box to my specs and um, and when I put it together of course we had a very tight restraint on, on the amount of money I could spend on this thing so the most expensive object was the air compressor and we'll take a look at that in a minute um, what we have here is basically a device that has a, a clear plexiglass door and it's held open with these uh, locking brackets and a f an air filter and gloves. I actually got the idea after looking at a, um, a sandblasting cabin. And I, it's basically what I wanted to find was a sandblasting booth. And the object is you put the, com in this case it would be a computer, in this cabinet and you use this air hose to blow all the dust out. But if you just did that, the dust would collect in the bottom of the unit and it would become a real mess and you wouldn't clean anything. So I had to come up with a way to eliminate the dust in a cheap manner and, and this killed it, in fact. What I ended up doing just so happened that my, my boss was getting a new uh, furnace in his house that, that the month I was designing this. So I said, hey, does the blower still work? And he said, yeah. So he brought in the old blower and I cleaned it up, I serviced the motor, got it running nice and cleanly and smoothly. I painted the entire blower housing, um, Chevy orange, I think that's the color I used. <laughs> and uh, I used a, it's, it's engine paint actually. And I mounted a, uh, a three position switch to use the three, it's a, it's a three, um, I call that a three pole motor. The mo it's a three speed motor. So I, I utilized all three speeds and you just control it with this switch. And that goes down using the, it's this nice uh, Romex conduit down to this box. This is the main power box and there is a, uh, a nice uh, 20 amp cord powering that. This is all clamped in nicely and uh, this is the main power switch. If I flick this switch on the compressor will likely kick on. Let's try it. Nice. Okay, so you have the air compressor and the blower motor. The problem is it's not very effective, and I'll tell you why. Um, in order to, ha to make it effective, dust evacuation or uh, dust collection system. You have to have high volumes of airflow. You have to have a, a ton of air to move all the dust through. And you have to engineer the cabinet correctly, which I did not. This unit is very effective. In fact, this, this filter here clogs up probably after cleaning about six or seven computers, the filter is completely clogged, and that's the problem there's not much surface area on that filter. A correct design would have used ductwork. Ductwork that I could not afford. <laughs> um, to, I, what I would have done is I would have blown the air across the cabinet, uh, across the top of it, with maybe one or two collection device, uh, collection tubes. I would do one on the top and one on the bottom to help collect the dust from the air and from the bottom and it would have been the draft action of the air blowing through this duct that would have sucked the air through 
and sent it into a second box or a large um, perforated bag, a filter bag preferably, and um, that would have collected all of the dust and prevented it from spreading throughout the room. The problem with this is the filter, yes, we're getting tons of volume through this, but the filter clogs too soon and it doesn't have the suction to pull the dust from the floor, obviously. I didn't really expect to have that much dust collecting on the bottom of this, I guess. I just wasn't thinking. But it does work, and I've already used this to clean... This has probably cleaned about 4,000 computers in its lifetime, and uh, plus printers and other, stuff, other items. I use it actually right now. I'm using it to clean keyboards, and this is, these are two boxes of PC keyboards that need to be cleaned. And it's doing a wonderful job, um, but I wish I had designed that ventilation system a little more intelligently. I knew a better way of designing it, but because of the restraint... This thing, by the way, to build cost around $500 to build, as you see it. And that's including the free blower. <laughs> so, anyway. So that's that. It does work. It works great. And I'll start the blower up so you can hear it run. Take this sheet of paper. Sucks it in. But not enough to pull it to the to the top, so take this light terminal here. Holding it in place. So there's that demonstration. Here's the fluorescent light that lights up the cabinet with its own override switch. So there you have it. Now the filter I chose was a wire mesh filter because it can be reused. You can actually clean this filter and I, I probably use this filter for about six months now or so and I just clean it with hot water and uh, dry it out, put it back in again, good to go. Not much dust, if any dust, comes out the exhaust. Um, I've actually been very very fortunate that this filter is effective to the point where the room doesn't get dusty after. But you can, excuse me, you can see a very fine layer of dust on the very top of the unit after cleaning about a one school's worth of computers. Now the air system it's pretty simple. I just I mounted this compressor to the base. It's mounted using its own built-in rubber mounts, U brackets which have rubber insulators, and that helps uh, insulate the vibration from the compressor motor. It isolates it to the compressor and doesn't allow it to to uh, vibrate the cabinet too much. And this is entirely detachable. Now to transport the unit. A little bit of water in there. To transport the unit, this is really cool because it's two separate units. You have the rolling base and you have the rolling top. Underneath, and this is all my design, I'm really proud of this. The top has wheels. So it, it does take two people, we get the two separated, but you can roll each individually down the hallway to the next classroom or wherever you happen to be going. And the, the top is actually sitting on. Um, foam pads and other vibration uh, reducing ish, uh, measure. So the base has wheels, top has wheels, and the two front wheels swivel so that it can be turned. So that's pretty cool. Um, now for transportation purposes I have these hose holders. One there. You unplug the compressor from the outlet, and uh, there you go. 
and this you can actually hang the power cord on. It just ravels around it. These are actually repurposed HP Pro Curve brackets. <laughs> so we try to use what we have, you know. And these handles are what you use to lift it off the base. Now, back to our um, recycling of existing parts uh, theme. Um, these gloves are actually electrician gloves. These are what they use to repair uh, power lines. They're rated for like, it actually says in here somewhere, they're rated for like 10,000 volts. <laughs> and I found these in a Granger catalog. To mount them to the, to the front of the cabinet, we had to cut these holes and these are actually buckets from the food service department. These were fruit salad buckets. And what's really nice about these buckets is because they're fruit salad buckets, they have rubber gaskets built in. So it helps reduce the, uh, the vacuum loss. To clean them, I just unscrew the buckets. There's three screws holding each one in. Pull them out and uh, wash the gloves with bleach. I, I, that's what I use to clean them inside because we have volunteers operating this machine in the summertime cleaning equipment, which is um, definitely a very cool thing. I do have a water separator here, and this does, and it's actually very effective. It doesn't reduce or remove all the water, but it removes a good portion of it. Um, on a nice, humid summer day, that little chamber fills up maybe about a quarter of the way with water. And it has a built-in particulate filter, that little uh, beige thing that you see right there, that's a screw-on particulate filter. And um, on the top, I believe, I don't even remember what that was for, that, that knob right there I think is an on-off knob. And uh, you can actually turn it with a wrench to shut the flow off or on. This is a, uh, a quick-release coupler, decoupler, and um, just a standard coiled hose. It's mounted using plastic screw-on tabs. Uh, that little Allen screw in the front, you can remove and add a pressure gauge, which I planned on doing when I built it, but I never got to it. And on the bottom you have a little release. You just push that little release uh, and it drains all the water out. Because this blower came out of a home furnace, it has two intakes, one on each side. So it can move incredible volumes of air, but the problem is I could not use the top intake for a couple of reasons. Um, I could not mount anything to it in a flat fashion because, well, number one, that's the motor, and that's the, the motor's only cooling intake. So because this motor does not have a built-in um, fan of its own or a, a, a blower, it actually uses the, the, the intake from, from, the, um, from the top to cool itself off. So you don't want to restrict that at all. Um, another thing is just the logistics of getting a, uh, um, a tubing or anything, anything to, to mount flat on the top of the unit to bring in that amount of air would be impossible. What I'd really like to do is, is somehow utilize the top and then put an intake somewhere else, like on the lower side, and that would double the amount of air that this thing can bring in. But unfortunately, I just don't have the money to buy all that duct work, and um, I have because of because I'm a pretty uh, busy guy as it is. I just don't have the time to do that. But again, as it is now, it works very effectively and um, it does its job. So you don't have a whole cloud of dust in here. So uh, while you're cleaning equipment, you don't have to worry about the cloud of dust. That takes care of what's, in, what's airborne. It's what doesn't wind up airborne that you've got to vacuum out. So it's kind of a pain in the neck, but that's life. So there's my cleaning machine. The only one in the world that I know of. I'm sure other people have built similar devices. And uh, well, that's all for now. Oh, these wheels do lock. They lock pretty nicely. I have a funny story about that. I was um, I was transporting this through one of our buildings, and 
I hit a ledge, like a, a ledge about that high from when you go from tile, like we have a tile floor in the in the entrance and we have um, just tiles, like the industrial tiles throughout the building like this. But I hit the ledge and knocked off two of my wheels. It turns out the um, our carpenter who built this used half inch wood screws to hold the wheels on. <laughs> like or maybe maybe a little bit bigger than that. They're like three quarter inch screws. Not good enough for that purpose. Uh, so I had to rescrew all the wheels with uh, much longer screws. I think I used uh, two inch drywall screws, or I'm sorry, deck screws. And uh, yeah, as I showed you, this filter is removable. This actually you have to remove to gain access to the filter. This is actually getting quite beat up. One of the kids who was using this last summer, I think he took the filter out and bent it on me. But anyhow, well, that's it for now.